Hey everyone, this is Dr. Crystal Lee, and I am back with another conversation. So in this conversation with Dr. Crystal Lee, I wanted to bring you a chaplaincy moment. And I wanted to talk about a few verses that deals with impossible. And I want to talk about how we should not be discouraged when we encounter impossible problems. I I wrote down, don't hate impossible problems because they are the recipe for a miracle. You see, oftentimes we want miracles and signs and wonders to follow us, but we really don't want to have to go through anything to be a beneficiary of those miracles. We want to just talk about the beautiful ones, you know, the good ones like, yeah, you know, I, I opened up my mailbox and a million dollar check was there or I bought a scratch off lottery ticket yesterday and boom, the father gave me a hundred million dollars. Like those are the ones we really like. But we never ask ourselves, what was the atmosphere that led to this incredible gift? You know, what did you have to go through? What were your problems? What were some of the things that you had to face that led you to this incredible miracle or blessing? And I know a lot of us have read the verse in Luke chapter 18, verse 27, where It says, what is impossible for man is possible for Yah or with Yah, with God. But do we really want to go through that? You know, I remember when I was um, pregnant with my youngest son and I had a a Bartholomew cyst. I guess I might be missing, you know, saying it a little wrong, but, but what, but essentially it had gotten so large it was like the size of an avocado it was huge and even when I um, was kind of going I, it was to the point where I couldn't walk I couldn't stand I couldn't I couldn't do really anything and I'm I don't know if, if y'all are like me but I just don't believe in a whole lot of medicine I'm like a herbalist to the heart I'll drink a tea for anything I'll, I'll find a solution and it's usually a natural solution just because I'm just not big on medicines and side effects and, and, and they causing something else or whatever, but that's just me. And so I, I, I just kept praying about it and I just, but I kept going through it. And I remember when it was really small and I remember when it started getting larger and I'm like, Father, you said that, you know, in your word that, you know, by your stripes, I may hold. You told me that, you know, as my soul prosper, you know, may everything pretty much around me prosper. I'm supposed to be prospering. I'm supposed to you know, um, have, you know, all of these gifts and blessings of healing and, 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 you know, restoration and things like that, healing in our bodies. And, and we believe in laying on of the hands and, and that we may recover. And so we quote these scriptures and we believe them, but what happens when they don't manifest the way you thought they should have, or as quickly as you want it? I mean, a lot of us want for a blessing or healing to be laid upon us and for us to instantaneously be healed. But what if that thing don't come out? But unless you pray and you fast and you, you war and you do these things, you know, I know, um, uh, some people's prayers, they were warring with, you know, not warring, but you know, they said, I won't let you go until you bless me, you know? And sometimes we have to be like that because if we're not, we won't get, we won't get it. You know, it, it won't happen because there is something that the father wants to teach you in this moment about either about you or about him. And you have to be willing to go through it to get to the miracle. Right. And so in the midst of having this, this cyst that kept growing, um, I had a dream. And in my dream, it said that I was going to deliver my son at 34 weeks or something like that. And we know if you deliver your child at 34 weeks, he's not going to likely, he's not going to live. Um, you have to be at least at 37 weeks gestation just for him to be able to have lungs and things capable of being in an ICU and, and coming out. All right. Now I'm not talking about the miracles that take place in people's children that do live at 34 weeks, but a great majority do not. And so when I saw the dream, I was like, well, Father, I, I need you to keep this child 
longer than that. I need I need not for my own body to turn against my son. And um, and I remember one day I was laying on the floor. My mom was there. She was trying to do the tobacco thing, and that wasn't working. And um, but I didn't stop believing in what he told me. And I remember I was laying on the floor and I started singing. I was in incredible pain, singing and tears running down my eyes all the same. And I said, I know, Father, this looks crazy, but I refuse to allow this to be taken from me, you know, for my son to be taken from me, from my faith to be taken from me. And I remember I sang like two songs. And after I sang two songs, the father said, you need to go to the hospital. I said, okay, I'll go to the hospital. And when I got to the hospital, this was all like during the first year of COVID, so everything. And you know what? It was nothing like I thought it was going to be. I, um, I didn't have to worry about a mask. I didn't have to worry about COVID. I didn't have to worry about um, nothing. And when I, when I got there, the lady said, oh, my God, <laughs> I've never seen one this large ever what in the world? She said, how did you do this for so long? I said, believe it or not, prayer, <laughs> prayer. You know, I, I waited until I, you know, until the father told me to go and, and what I was expecting, you know, was going to happen. And the lady said, okay, yeah, we're going to have to definitely, you know, do a quick surgery to, to release the pressure. And she told me, she said, Crystal, if you didn't come when you did, then you could have went into labor because your pain was so high that your own body would have gotten rid of the baby to offset the pain you were feeling. And I said, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> and so I, I went through the, the surgery. Oh my goodness, it was crazy. Um, and, um, and after I went from that, it didn't all the way go away. I ended up having to go through like two more incidences with the same sis. It just kept, it didn't want to go away all the way. And I just remember, I just kept praying about it. And I, and I, I, I realized that sometimes you have to go through pain and not everybody's going to understand it. Not everybody's going to agree with your approach, but in going through that, I learned the most about faith. I learned the most about um, covering. I learned the most about, and my doctors, you know, they didn't even think it was a big deal. They, they, you know, because you got to go and get checkups. They was like, yeah, you know, it'll be all right. It'll go down. And, and it never gotten to the point where it was the size that it was with him. And, and I knew that that was the enemy's attack on my son, too. And that whenever there's something great coming, the enemy wants to block you from believing in the impossible. He wants to rob you of your circumstances so that you feel sorry for yourself or that you um, make some of, you know, some of the decisions that will take you out of faith and into carnality where you're doing things, you know, to save your, your own life or you're doing things to, to save your own interests. And the flesh will always want to do that. It will always save itself. But the Bible says that we must die to ourselves so that we may live through spirit or by our, you know, by the spirit. And when we're spirit led, we discover so many more miracles, signs, and wonders. Like I would have never thought I was strong enough to go through the stuff that I did, but had I never gone through it, I would have, I would have never known what was possible. And that in and of itself is a miracle. So when the father says, what is impossible with man is possible with me, he really does mean it. Um, he really does mean it. And I can come up with some more examples on how, you know, things, what was impossible with man was possible with the most high. And I want you to think about some of the things too. I mean, I know some of you have gotten health reports that you have, you know, acquired this or acquired that, or this is the only way, or this is imminent. And you have heard the miracle of how the father have given them more years to live or how he has blessed them even with the disease. You know, they have still been able to do the things that most have said they couldn't do or they have outperformed in areas where they were supposed to not have that. I mean, people that have heart attacks and strokes and, and all kinds of things that's happening right now 
And, and I want you not to hate these problems. I know it sounds crazy. You might say, well, why would you not hate strokes? Or why would you not hate this? Why would you not hate that? Because it is when we are in impossible circumstances that we really realize how super, how amazing the Father is. And if you don't believe it, if we won't believe it, because we see it in other people, and if we, or we see it in, in the simple things, and if you always look for the big things to show you something, then don't be surprised when the big things come that are challenging. And it is not for you to run away from it and, and be scared, but it is for you to dig deep and to pray and sometimes fast and, and, and do all of the things that, that's also in scripture for us to get what we are seeking from the Most High. So I pray that you all are blessed, that you are encouraged, and that you know that he speaks in all kinds of ways. He can speak in dreams. He can speak verbally. He can speak through prayer. He can speak through other people. He will get you a message for the blessing, the miracle, the breakthrough um, that you're looking for. And, and he can also give you the ability to live right where you are. I mean, Paul prayed three times for the thorn to be removed from his side, but it was never removed. Why? Because he said that his glory, his mercy, all the things was sufficient for him. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to give you the ability to deal with this pain. I'm going to give you the ability to deal with the hurt. I'm going to give you the ability to, to see past this so that you can see. I'm going to remind you that you are still in a process, in a battle. Sometimes when we don't have any problems, we don't even realize we're in a battle, but we battle every day. You know, choose you this day who you will serve. That's every day. So I encourage you to still believe the Father. Trust him. He says, those that trust me won't be put to shame. No good thing will I keep from you. That includes the good and not so good. And some things we bring upon ourselves. But the Father says he'll never leave us nor forsake us. And so continue to, to try to be blameless, be holy, have um, no ill words to be able to be said about you because you are living a miracle. You are a walking, breathing sacrifice that is a miracle to people. People fascinate over how you do it. How do you not complain? How do you keep a smile on your face? And you are blessing other people, but most importantly, you're giving glory to the Most High. So may you all be blessed. I'm Dr. Crystal Lee. You can find me online at, well, social media, at author, K-L-E-E. -E. You can find me on a few websites. Um, this and many other conversations at Dr. D-R-K-R-Y-S-T-A-L-L-E-E.com. You can also go to author -E -E com for like my books and things like that. And lastly, I encourage you also to visit KLEproductions.com where you will also find videos from me, but also some really encouraging folks as well. So may you all be blessed. Have a wonderful one and bye-bye for now.